Yeah. So we're going to start today for the uh, equations of motion, which uh, which we did plan on our last class to get started along. Uh, so the equations of motions are basically a shortcut for us to do the mathematical calculations regarding the kinematics and the dynamics thing much too easily. There is a simpler approach towards it, which I'm going to explain to you in due time. And I am also going to try to explain the physical meaning of uh, most of this or, or, or each of these formula as we are slowly going to go forward. Uh, but first, I would like to tell you one, one thing that you guys do understand the difference between scalar quantities and vector quantities, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So one of the things that you need to understand that if we, if we ever have a vector quantity, let's say if I write a vector quantity like this, let's say, oh, no, 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 no. I'll just leave this one. Yeah. If, we, if, if I have a vector quantity, let's say, let us represent as like this X bar. And this X bar would, is it, I mean, the bar symbol is basically the symbolization for a vector quantity. But if in any case we do a square of this thing, let's say if I ever write this thing, this basically means that the direction property would become obliterated as we do a square of this quantity. So, uh, and in other words, I can say that the velocity can be a vector quantity, but if you do a square of that velocity, let's say if you do this, then essentially you can, that is perfectly equal to V square. I mean, in the square quantity, the direction quantity would not be present. Now, why does this happen? is a part of discussion that is called vector geometry calculation uh, because two vector quantities can be multiplied in two different ways. Uh, we can multiply two different vector quantities uh, as uh, scalar multiplication. Sometimes you can also multiply as vector multiplication. Squaring means the scalar multiplication, which as a result, the even though you are gonna multiply two vector quantities, your output is gonna become scalar. So bottom line, simple thing for you to remember, I'm not getting into the exact geometric or mathematical explanation for how this actually happened, which is a bit far-fetched for our syllabus volume for a physics class. But take my word that if we ever square a vector quantity, it is gonna only become a magnitude. It will not have, in, in the square quantity, it will not have the duration property included anymore. That's the important bit. So I'm gonna go forward through this thing, a uh, couple of things. And before I go ahead forward, I'd like to tell you one more additional information, which is one of the key idea that I really wanted to understand that whenever we are working with physical quantities, for the case of addition or subtraction, we can always, and we, uh, not always, we can only work with similar quantities. You can only add similar quantities. You can only subtract similar quantities. What I mean is that you can add a mass with a mass. So you can add, let's say, 2 kg with half kg. Okay, I'm having a bit sensitivity issue, which I have to calibrate later. Okay, hold, hold up. You can you can add 2 kg with half kg. Uh, that's possible. Now you can directly add these two numbers. This point should not be here. Is there a point? Oh, yeah, I wrote a point over here. Where is the select? Yeah. Okay. You can add these two numbers very easily, and essentially you will get what? You'll get. Two point five kg. That's very easily possible to, for us to do, because both of these numbers are numbers, and they're the similar quantities, and also the units are exactly same. Both of them are expressed in kg. But if we ever if we ever try to add, let's say, uh, two kg. Plus. 300 gram this will not give you 302 kg neither this will give you uh, 302 gram this would be wrong you can you get either of this 2 plus 300 gives you 200 and 300 but you cannot add this kind of quantities if you are trying to add two similar quantities both of them are mass but also to be able to add them both of their units has to be exactly same you can add kilogram with kilogram you can add milligram with milligram you can add gram with gram you can add meters per second if it's a velocity or speed with meters per second you cannot add meters per second with centimeters per second that would be wrong so i'm telling you two different information over here hear me out very very carefully only similar quantities can be added so two velocities can be added together velocity and speed also cannot be added together because velocity and speed are not the similar quantity idea wise they have a difference Velocity is a vector quantity, comes with magnitude and direction, whereas speed is a scalar quantity, comes exclusively with magnitude. 
So even though even if they, even though they have the same unit, but they are not the same quantity. So the logic that I want you to understand that if we want to add two similar quantities, uh, if we want to add two quantities, first of all, they have to be similar quantity. So you can add mass with mass, time with time, velocity with velocity, speed with speed, acceleration with acceleration, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And then also they have to have the exit expression of all the individual part of the unit. For example, if you are trying to add two speeds, one of them is centimeter per second. The other speed that you are trying to add that has to be also expressed in centimeter per second. Only then can you add these two numbers. So this is the one in logic. And this is also equal for subtraction as well. So only similar quantities can be added. This tells you one more another another information in the reverse order. Reverse order is that, let's say if I ever write an equation like this, let's say I'm, I'm gonna write an equation like, this. let's say V equals to U plus AT. Let's forget about this equation. If I write an equation that looks like this, let's say, uh, if I write an equation that looks like this, let's say, uh, x equals to y plus z. Now, if I if I tell you that, well, for this equation, x and y are forces. If I give you this information, x and y are forces. Then, essentially, you should understand what should z be. What quantity should z be? Force that should also be a force. That, has, that also has to be a force, which means only similar quantities can be added. Now, even if the similar quantities doesn't even look like it, you have to understand that they have to be similar quantities because they can be added. They should be able to add it. So, if we consider this equation, d equals to u plus at, this is the symbol for final velocity. This is the symbol for initial velocity, and this should also mean that this should also be some sort of velocity over here. This should also be some sort of velocity because you can only add velocities together which means if you multiply the acceleration with time you're going to get some version of velocity but the quantity that product would represent acceleration and the product of time that has to be velocity as well it is not going to be anything else it cannot be anything else is it clear up till now yes sir yes, yes sir yes sir will you repeat the last line i mean uh the product of acceleration and time will also be some form of velocity. Some form of velocity, but it has to be velocity as well. That was my last line. Sir? So, yes? Sir, could you explain the equation you wrote, uh, x equals to y plus z, that part? Uh, I wrote a random equation, and with what, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that if we have an equation like this that is given to us that x vector x equals to vector y plus vector z, and if the equation uh, gives you, or if I am telling you that x and y, these two vectors have force, force, the quantity wise they are force, then I asked you that if that is true, then what quantity should z represent? It? That was the question. So if, it would be a force as well. Exactly, that's the answer. So you can only add similar quantities. So there's another important thing. The other thing that I would like you to understand is the typical calculation error. I mean, it's not very common, but uh, when, when kids do this uh, once in their math, they fail to see that, uh, see that error as they slowly go ahead further in their, in their working. The other common typical error that the kid, kids sometimes do is whenever they're trying to calculate some time amount. Let's say if I write t equals to one minute 30 second now my question is now i'm going to use a made up symbol this is not an actual designated symbol but i'm making up this symbol so it is does is it equal to is this equal to 1.30 second no no sir no 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 sir no do you understand why? Yes. Yes. Why? It would Someone be 90 seconds. One minute is 60 seconds. 60. Exactly. One minute is 60 seconds. And where is 60 the 60 plus 30. So it would be 90. 90, 90, 90 seconds. seconds. Oh, uh, all right. Oh, sorry. I, I actually wrote the last thing wrong. So. Okay. It will be 90 seconds, but uh, I actually wrote that unit wrong. But so if I write one minute 30 seconds, it goes to 1.30 minute. Can I write that? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, it can be. Yes, sir. No. 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 What? 
the 1.5 minutes it's 1.5 minutes 1.5 minutes can we write that that answer is also a solid no we cannot write that because one minute is made up from 60 seconds. So every single time we have to convert a minute with second, we have to divide the amount of seconds by 60 to get the actual fraction output of that value. So important bit that you cannot directly convert uh, some minute and some second information directly into its decimal value. That's not gonna work out. You have to use it by dividing the second quantity towards the value. So which means that the, if I want to express this number, if I want to express this time into actual second, that would be 90 minutes per 30 seconds, which is 120 sec uh, 90 seconds, which is very easily understandable. But if I want to express this whole thing into minute exclusively, I can write it like this. One plus 30 divided by 60 minute. That is going to be okay. Which gives you so how that much? that would be 1.5 minutes. So that will be 1.5 minute. So important for you to understand that this thing is, these two things are not same. One, one specific way by which this can apparently be, can be given to you in a more confusing manner is this. If you guys have ever seen a digital watch, you should, you should understand this thing. One minute 30 seconds can also be written in this format. You see, I've given a colon over here. Let's say you have this reading at the minute that is shown in a stopwatch display or in digital. Yeah. Now, whenever you have two dots over here, these dots does not mean what does it mean? 0.30 minute. What does it mean? One minute thirty. Seconds. Right, so it's one one minute, one hour thirty. One this means 30 one hour. Seconds. No, no, no. The one hour thirty seconds. So uh, okay, fine. Thirty it, seconds. I mean, unless otherwise specified, this could be either expressed as one hour thirty minutes. That is also actually possible. Now that someone of some of you said that, or it could also mean that one minute thirty second. But the, the question will essentially mean to tell you what this actually means. But my point, that point that, that I'm trying to show you, that if you have these of this, these two dots, then you cannot consider it as a decimal value. It has to go for further. So if I just cut this off, let's say I'm going to cut this off altogether. Uh, so I, other than doing that, I should have I could have erased it altogether. Where is my mouse? Okay, I cannot use my mouse while it's over there. Right pad is nice. My handwriting is more legible than before, right? Yes, sir. Right pad is yes, nice. Sir. I just have to get used to this for the quick swap, quick, uh, quick swap and everything. So if, if, if in any case the display gives us a value or representation that somewhat looks like this, let's say 1.30.25. Now, what would this essentially mean? I mean, what would this thing mean exclusively? Forget about this. One hour, 30, One hour, 30 minutes, minutes 25, 25 seconds. seconds. Yeah. Exactly. Now come to the point, uh, if we consider a stopwatch, let's say we have a stopwatch. Uh, so th this would essentially mean one hour, 30 minutes, 25 seconds. So this is perfectly good. Uh, how many of you have ever had, had your hands on a digital stopwatch? Digital stopwatch. You might, you might have not. Yeah, Shojib, go ahead. Ask the question. Hello, Shojib. Yes, sir. Molo. Uh, sir, uh, why would it be considered as one hour? Uh, because I gave two two columns over here. None of them are decimal points. So you have the rightmost digit usually represents for a digital watch. Sir, why couldn't we consider this as a nanosecond? Because that's usually doesn't, uh, is not the typical digital display value that we have access to. If you consider a digital watch, uh, if you see this reading, this would mean that one hour, 30 minutes and 25 seconds. For any other type of display, it could be anything else, but for a digital watch, this is what it means. But for stopwatches, this would mean something else. Let me show you why this would mean something else. Important for you to understand. Let me uh, find this out. Digital stopwatch. Yeah, uh, milliseconds too. Mm, no, not milliseconds. I'll, I'll get it to you. This is how a digital stopwatch display looks like. The typical, the most common digital uh, stopwatch that you're going to operate is going to look uh, some, where is the Casio one? Uh, you're going to have access to in your lab experiments. I mean, these are a bit high tech. 
somewhat something that looks similar to this but i'm going to get the find out the exact model why can't i find this So I cannot find the exact model. I don't know why. This will be prominent. Why, why wouldn't they give it? So never mind. So I'm going to use the first picture anyway. Oops. Bam. So uh, if you consider a very simple stopwatch, let's say uh, not this one, not this one either. Should No, not this one. Okay, this is gonna be all right. So let's just try to, should I? Yeah, this is good. Okay, yeah, this is good. So if you have a look at this display, this display is actually pretty, uh, uh, pretty well, well drawn. Uh, you can see it over here that over here we have a zero mark and then we have a dot 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 mark then we have two zeros and there's a single dot in some cases you might not have this dot you might have two columns over here and then you're gonna have two digits so you're gonna have these digits in a bigger size then you have two smaller digits over here these digits represent the exact time and where this is the second value this is the minute value and this is the hour value because there is an only there is only one digit for the hour value is because if you're using a digital stopwatch you should not expect your experiment to run for more than uh, nine hours uh, that's pretty not 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 normal that's why they didn't bother to give the last digit so you know so that you do not count more than nine hours so that's the that's one of the reason because stopwatches are applicable devices where the measurement of the time is has to be pretty small and you have to measure it really really to a very large number of decimal places or you have to measure it pretty precisely so that's first one is for hour first one is for hour the first one is for hour the second two are for minute the third two are for second but there, there is a catch these two values that we have over millisecond here, they are not millisecond i'll tell you why how many digits do you see over here how many two. digits two, two. two digits two. What is the biggest number made up from two digits? 99. 99. 99. Which means it is possible for you, to, if you have a reading that looks like this, that's a one point, let's say 32, then 22, then let's say 42. Let's say this is the small digit. How much time would this mean? So you have two digits over here. Two digits means this is the, this one is going to represent one hundredth of a second. And the way it's going to work is going to increase from zero to ninety nine, and after ninety nine, it's going to come back to double zero. That will give you one hundredth of a second. What do you call a fraction that is one hundredth of a unit? One by one hundred is how many seconds? Uh, is 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 uh, what is the name of the index? For example, kilo stands for zero one. Point zero one. Uh, centi. Exactly. I was looking for this oh, one. Centi. For example, you know this that one meter equals to how many centimeter? Hundred centimeter. Hundred. Hundred centimeter. One meter means hundred centimeter, which essentially means that if any quantity can be divided into hundred pieces, then each of those pieces is called one centi of that quantity. So you can similarly, I mean, the way we can have centimeter, we can also have centi centigram. We can have uh, centi uh, centi second. We can, I mean, the centi is the name of the prefix which represents one hundredth. Now, centimeter is more common to us because we are acquainted with this for length measurement. Centisecond is not so common, but it is not essentially impossible. So this this time measurement essentially represents the centisecond value. So if I have to write this entire reading, this if I want to write this entire reading into second, only second, how much should my calculation look like? Have a look. How many seconds make up one hour? Um, 3600. 3600. 
That's how, that's the total second value of this whole number. If you wonder why am I so bothered to convert everything into second? Because a second is the internationally defined unit for time. So the SI unit works okay. for time is second. That's why I'm converting everything into second. So if you calculate the whole thing, that will be the total time represented in this stopwatch reading. So the last two digits, can go up to 99 and then become zero. But you have to understand this, this is pretty important. I mean, really, really important that this number, because it has only one digit, the maximum value for this can represent is nine. How much will be the maximum digit that is displayed for these two digits? What will be the maximum value that we can see over here? 60. 60. No. No, like 59, sorry. 59. Yep, that's correct. 59. Because right after 59, it will become double zero. And that's when your hour will become one more. Okay. Okay. And then how much should be, should be the maximum value we've seen over here? 59. 59. 59. But how much is the maximum value seen over here? 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. So, a part of is this uh, visualization clear to all of us? Yes. Yes. Sir. yes. 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 Sir, can you explain this part again? Uh, what is the total time you can see in this stopwatch? The part again where you said that the highest bit is 59? I didn't understand that. Oh, because uh, this, is the, this is the second value. This is the second value. So, right. Because that's what I said in the beginning. This, is the, this, is the, this marking is for hour. This marking is for minute. And this marking is for second. That's how a typical display of a stopwatch mean. Uh, it's not about why, I'm telling you what. That's how it's designed to operate. Right. And the last two small digits represent one hundredth of a second. That's what it's meant. So I can write that this, these two digits represents centiseconds. I might as well write CS, centi, second. C for centi, S for, very much you can write centimeter like that, so you can write centiseconds like that, CS. So this is how it works. So because you can have the maximum value of second is 59 because after 59 seconds, you're gonna have 60 seconds, which needs not need not to be shown because whenever your value will rotate to 60, you're gonna have one minute increased over here and this will become to zero. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, AKM Sami. Sir, I'm already a key question. Yes, sir. Sir, this 0.42, this quantity is very small compared to the first three values, right? Definitely. We can consider it to be negligible. So what is the importance of it to be in a stopwatch? You're absolutely correct that uh, we can choose this number to be negligible. But uh, I'm, to be honest, the measurement that we usually make from stopwatches can always some errorful. I'm, I'm going to talk about that error source in a bit. For our relevant experiment, if we are trying to consider this, uh, this entire amount of time. For our entire inter purpose, if you consider this amount of time, if you consider this amount of time with respect to this much, well, we can very well consider this to be negligible. That is true. But whether we can or whether we should consider this time to be negligible or not, that is a definitely a logical proposition, but that will be dependent on the experiment that we're trying to achieve. Let's say if you are trying to calculate, let's say if you are trying to calculate the amount of time that a, that a rocket that is gonna be shot from the ground, is gonna take to reach up to the to a certain point in the sky in the space. If let's say it's gonna connect to International Space Station or something like that. In those cases, that time is not gonna be negligible because if you are traveling that much high distance, that much time can give you a distance of uh, let's say one or uh, two three kilometers in space. So whether we can consider that time to be negligible or not is dependent on the aspect of measurement. So that is something that I did not try to uh, get over, get, get, get into discussion. I was only trying to uh, uh, 
for this discussion, I was trying to give you the idea that which digit means what. But whether we can consider this quantity as negligible or not is highly dependent on the scenario where this measurement was done. So right off the bat, we cannot say it's negligible. Bujarsi. Yeah, Yes, sir, I got it. Okay. Wasifa. So can you show the conversion for the last one? How did we get 0 0.42? Uh, these two digits represent the hundredth fraction of, of one second. The These two digits has the capability to go as high as up to 99. So this thing is going to go 99 means that it's going to start increasing from double zero. Then it can be zero one. Then it can be zero two. It can go all the way up to 99. And after 99, it will become zero zero. So that gives you 100 divisions. So 100 division means that these two numbers represents 0 0.01 second each of these values. So this is zero second. This is 0 0.01 second, 0 0.02 second, 0. Point, uh, and it can go all the way up to 0 0.99 second. And then you can have 1.00 second, which will be increasing the value over here, and this will become zero. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks. Yeah, Adiba. Um, sir. Um, last sentence, second is jokhon 99 hit korbe. Ta kono into second to one hobe, right? Yes. 60 hit korar por second to one hobe. No, no. 99 hit korar pori. Yes. Yeah, love you all. Sir, last year, it was a millisecond or centisecond? Centisecond. I mean, if I, if I, if I give you a more, more, uh, more holistic answer for this question, which, is, which I can bring about to give you some idea, have a look. Uh, I'm going to show you something which is relevant to this chapter, and I'm, I, I, I could give you the class notes in table form as well, but this is what I need to understand. Have a look. If I write a single number, one, this is the unit place. If you write 1.0, so other than writing zero, let's say I'm gonna write uh, another digit. Let's say I'm gonna write 1.2. This is the DC place, DCI, which has a power of 10 to the power minus one, because this is one by 10. So 0 0.1 means one by 10. So this is the first decimal place, which is called DC. The second decimal place is called centi. The third decimal place then is milli is called milli. So this is how we define these three over here. This is unit. This is unique. So this is just unit. Unit means one. Then the next one, let's say, if I write over here, let's say what? Uh, okay, I am going to write it like this just to for me so that I don't have to. Think. Let's say if I write this one. This one is red deca, which is not a very commonly used term anymore because we don't bother about this. Then we have this digit, the hundred. Hecto. This is called hecto, uh, which is a really an obsolete term currently. We can only call it the hundred position. This is the tenth position. So you can also say that is the tenth value and this is that hundred value. Here, that this 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 value. I mean, three in front of the unit place. This is called a kilo. Kilo is a very common value. For example, kilometer, kilogram, kilo kelvin, uh, kilo mole. Uh, there can be a lot of different uh, kilos. A, up to this much place, we have the increment happening ten uh, for by ten ten by 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 a division of ten or by a multiplication of ten. Up till this much, we have the numbers given. From this point onwards, or from, from this point onward, for bigger numbers or for even smaller numbers, we do not use the tenth increment anymore. The way it increases from this point further is like this. Let's say I'm gonna use blue over here. We're gonna have three more digits over here. So let's say this is first decimal place, second decimal place, third decimal place. Third decimal place is milli. And let's say we have another number over here, and the number over here, and another number over here. This one is gonna be called micro. If I just give you the 10th value, for example, milli has a 10 multiple of 10 to the power minus 3. Micro has a 10th multiple of 10 to the power minus 6. If you wonder what does that even mean? I mean, 
what is this coming from what is this coming from let me show you what is this coming from if you consider the very smallest number for a, the smallest number for a milli scale is actually 0 0.001 this is the smallest number in the milli scale smallest number in the milli scale so if i write this in terms of 10 to the power this is going to be 10 to the power minus 3 the smallest number that you can write in micro scale is going to be 0 0.00001 if you write convert this into uh, as power of 10 this is going to become 10 to the power minus 6 so that's micro so up to the third value we have an increment of 10 by 10 by 10 but beyond the melee we, we the scientists have renamed them for every three or every thousand increase so uh so you, this is micro so we're jumping directly from here to here and then from here to here we're gonna have another three more spaces one two three and this third space uh this one is called nano nano has a power of 10 to the power minus 9 you see uh, this this i mean have a look the, if i wrote in terms of 10 power this is going to be 10 to the power of 0 do you see it 10 anything to the power of 0 gives you what one anything one. to the power of 0 gives you one, one. interesting question uh all this is a math math question i'm gonna just place this question and i'm gonna move on so if you're interested you can think about this uh zero to the power one equals to what zero 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 to the power two equals to what zero 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 zero, zero. 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 anything one to the power zero equals to what one. 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 Zero equals to zero to the power is zero. One. That was my question. How much is this? Undefined. Zero. Zero. You can look this Undefined. up. Undefined. Look about this. Undefined. One. It's one. Undefined. Anything to the power I, zero is one. I'm not willing to rob you of the experience to look up for this answer. Look, look it up. Undefined it's math error. Math error, exactly. Yeah. You, you're going to get I math error. Just, yeah. just error. Your calculator cannot handle this information, but it definitely should not matter. I mean, there is a way to find this value. Look it up. Uh, uh, if you will, you can take it as a homework and we can talk about this thing in the next class. So Sir. I'm going to down the line. Uh, uh, yes. Is it con zero to the power zero considered as infinity? Uh, well, that's what I wanted to find out. You take it as a homework, so we can talk about it on Friday, inshallah. Okay. Um, sorry, the question, Shilo. Go ahead. Sir, I'm a uh, millisecond scale, hello, 60 is worry, but it's 10 to the power 3, right? But centisecond, we are considering it 10 to the power 2. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Millisecond is 60 is worry, no, 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 no. What do We don't consider it as 60, you can't consider it? No, 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 no. 99 kore. No, 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 no. If you have a number that has two digits, I mean, after decimal place two digits or before decimal place two digits? After decimal place. Asha, let, let me write some values so that I believe this will answer your question without, without me beating around the bushes. So, this is read, uh, to be read as 60 centisecond. To be read as 62 centisecond. This one should be read as 625 millisecond. If I go further, if I wrote this as a 6253, this should be read as 625.3 millisecond. How does this work? I'll show you. Uh, this is very simple. This milli has a default mathematical value of 10 to the power minus 3. So if I just replace the value of milli over here, I can very well write this 625.3 into 10 to the power minus 3. If you do this calculation, you are definitely going to end up with this exact number. So milli, this symbol, has a mathematical equivalency of 10 to the power minus 3. Did I get your question answered? Um, 92.5. How do we do that? 92.5 what? Um, seconds. Okay, 92.5 seconds. 
if you want to write this you can write it in terms of in, in what term do you want to write this millisecond or send a second yeah. or what? send a second fine so to make it into send a second we can essentially multiply this whole value by 100 because centi, centi has equivalent number of 100 so one way i can do this i mean just basic mathematical procedure have a look let's say 92.5 kids i'm not looking at your chat chat window because i have the chat window minimized so writing in the chat window is not going to help unless you raise your hand and preferably don't communicate amongst yourself it's distracting for me so 92.5 i'm going to write 100 over here or to be more uh, convenient, convenient I'm going to write 10 to the power 2 over here because I want to express this into centisecond. So I'm going to write 10 to the power minus 2 second. So what is going to happen in the next step? I'm going to do this multiplication actually. I'm going to convert this into centi and I'm going to write second. So if you do the multiplication, how much you're going to get? You're going to get 9250. There you go. And if we multiply, uh, if we want to convert it into milliseconds, then we 10 to the power 3, right? Yes, exactly. Oh, okay, sir. Hold on. A possibility to get you, sir. Sir, I didn't understand the conversion. Sir, I'm worried to solve it. Solve the scene. We wanted, let's say, for a certain scenario, we wanted to convert this amount of second into centisecond. Let's say for any purpose or so, whatever the purpose be. So, if you want to convert this into centisecond, you need to have centi in your expression. Now, you should recall from this point that. Centi means uh, equivalence of 10 to the power minus 2. This is these are the this equivalence you have to remember that this is a unit and then after decimal point have deci, centi, milli, then jump starts. So we have then micro, then jump, nano, and then we can have a fair bit more further down, which I'm gonna write in after a while, doesn't matter. But you have to remember these 10 powers if you have to do well in your calculation. Centi means 10 to the power minus 2. So the mathematical equivalence for centi is 10 to the minus 2. This, if you wonder, what does this even mean? Let me tell you this thing. In math, what does what, what is the what is the mathematical equivalence of this symbol? What is the mathematical replacement of this symbol? Something by hundred. Not something by hundred. One, one by one, one by, by hundred. One by hundred. One by hundred. One by hundred. The reason, wh whoever you said that some something, you're not essentially incorrect. I'll tell you why. Because if I write 63%, you meant this. And what I meant by 1 by 100 is this. If I write 63%, this means 63 into 1 by 100. They're basically the same thing. There's no not much difference in them, is there? It's the same thing. So the symbols percentage sign essentially has a numerical equivalent of 1 by 100. In the same way, the, the symbol centi has a numerical equivalent of 1 by 100, which is basically 10 to the power minus 2. Now, if you wonder, can we write percentage in terms of in place of C? Well, mathematically, yes, but for practical purposes, no. Percentage is one type of information. Centi is another type of information. They are not the same. Uh, they have the same math, equal mathematical value, but they are not the same thing. For example, let's say, I'm a manush to me a manush, but I'm like this akijinish, I'm not akijinish now. So something like that. <laughs> so th that's how it converts and go forward from there. So milli has a symbol of small m, not big, big m, because big m is used for another symbol that is mega, which I'm going to see in a bit. Uh, it's going to be show up over there. So milli is basically one by thousand, which is basically numerically equivalent to 10 to the power minus three and so on and so forth. With our C. So if, if I want to convert this exact number into, let's say, millisecond, then how can we achieve this? Let me show you. I can convert this into millisecond. If so, if I want to convert into millisecond, I'm going to multiply this by 1,000. Why do I want to multiply this by 1,000? Because in the same procedure, if I just do this with a different color, let's say I'm going to use green. So 92.5 into 10 to the power 3. Why am I using 10 to the power 3? Because I want to have a compensated 10 to the power minus 3. You see, these two will cancel each other out. The reason I'm bringing this up so that I can write this part as milli and the second it simply places itself then you multiply this thing by thousand how much you're gonna get nine two five zero zero why are we writing ten to the power of minus three is it necessary to write uh it's not essentially necessary to write i mean you can directly write that this much equals to i mean once you are uh, once you're used to the calculation you can directly write this much equals to nine two five zero zero 
millisecond. You don't have to show the calculation. The reason I'm breaking this up into pieces so that I can convince you of the mathematical procedure. I'm showing you this breakdown to convince you that how the math works, sir. But you don't necessarily have to do this for every single time. You practically have to practically. Sir. Cannot. Yes. Are these prefix values given in the book? They are given in the book, and I'll also give you a note uh, for your purpose. So they are definitely given in the book. Yes. Okay. Sir, I still don't understand why did we multiply ten to the power minus three? Because. One of the students asked that we want to convert this exact amount into millisecond expression. To bring about the milli in my unit, I need a 10 to the power minus 3. Because I had to have a 10 to the power minus 3 over here, I had to give a compensating 10 to the power 3 over here so that these two would eventually multiply into 1. But I don't want to do the multiplication among themselves because I want to convert this number into the symbol milli. And that's why I multiply these two numbers over here to get this big number. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. So these are the ways, different ways you can do the calculation. So just for the completeness of my discussion, I'm gonna try and uh, and fill up this table over here. So I have already actually used up a lot of space. So I might as well move this. A little bit to the right, it works. So for the next part, so let me just bring in the whole view to you. So this is the unit position. So then we have DC centi milli, then three three steps. So we have macro, nano, and then if I write three more digits, okay, uh, I have to choose this one. So if I write three more digits, this is zero, zero, zero. This is gonna be uh, pico. It's called pico. The symbol is small p, which means 10 to the power minus 12. The syllabus is not a good but it is a good thing to step asse, which you can look up in Google if you are interested and it can work. Please, just a second, I have to pick a call. Sorry, so, so beyond this point, we have a couple of more further steps that the scientists have defined for their purposes. So, pico para so femto, femto para se ato, para se yocto. So, you don't have to remember up to this much. So, you can remember this much. And this will serve your purpose all the way up to A2, A2 level. Uh, up to Sir. Peak. You don't have to need further, further points. Yes. So, what about uh, stereo gigameter? Tera giga mega, no? Yeah, those are I mean, on the on the lower side. You don't have any anymore, but there is more on this side. I mean, it's a technical link. I said to Balaha Shuru. Acha, Laviya, you have a question. You and uh, Fabi have uh, raised hands. Laviya, yes. Sir, I think I mistakenly pressed the raise hand button. Okay, uh, Fabiha, Rim Hosan. Sir, for the last. Some, I, I don't understand why the answer was what it was. Isn't the 10 going to get canceled out? Here? Yeah. They are gonna go canceled out. That's the whole point of having 10 to the power 3 and 10 to the power minus 3 together so that the original number doesn't change. We okay, then why is the answer? Then we, why is the answer? Yeah, why is the answer like this? Yeah. Because we converted this 10 to the power minus 3 into a symbol milli. This MIDI has a numerical equivalent of 10 to the power minus 3. Oh. And but so it's still going to get cancelled out. No, it's not going to be cancelled out. Now we have 1000 at, I mean, 92.5 into 1000 is embedded here, and the MIDI is holding its own 10 to the power minus 3. So this is, this is basically two parts. If you Sorry, want, I didn't understand. Okay, I'll help you to give you a better example. Let's say. You have 36 apples. 
how many pair do you have um 6 18 it's 18 okay. pair right. you have 18 pair that's one way to write this now how many pair make one dozen how many um, pair? Six, six. Six, pair make, six pair makes one dozen right right good so one way i can convert this thing if i want to convert this information into dozen i can do this 18 into 1 by 6 into six pair why am i doing one, this sir. because i want to write this expression as a single word dozen which comes from here and uh, i calculate this two to get three so this is going to be three dozen so 36 apple is going to mean three dozen or it can equally mean 18 pair uh, now mm -hmm. i understood sir so have a look at this calculation that's the exact thing that i did over here so i it did be about about it in the one stage so that i can convert this thing into a word milli and i put the confirmation factor over here so that i could multiply and eventually get this over here okay sir now i understood beautiful arib so second stroke to mane mane milli the mane centi mane milli the centimeter jabe sir second stroke ki mane aro speed theke aro bakhte thakbe ne na uh this is not gonna uh, the, the i mean the amount of time that we are talking about is exactly same if you express it as, as 92.5 second or 9250 centisecond or 92500 millisecond all of these expressions represent the exactly same amount of time because they are all equal to each other they are they have different numerical values because they are expressed in different amount like the way we uh, i showed you in this case 36 apple in this case there was no pair there was no dozen so this was just a single number Each apple considered as one. Thirty-six apple could be expressed as eighteen pair. That's a different number because the pair means two. Then thirty-six apple can also be expressed as three dozen because each dozen means twelve. So whenever you change that, change the unit, you have to logically change the number value as well so that they will together mean the same information. Hmm. Yes. So, so whenever we wrote the millisecond, because millisecond is a much smaller unit, that's why the number got be even bigger. Centisecond is a bit bigger than millisecond, but. Yeah, I mean, is a ninety-two ninety-two point five centiseconds. So, I mean, milliseconds are also faster. Or what? I mean, nine. I mean, per minute, ninety-two point five seconds. So, no, ninety-two thousand five hundred milliseconds. That's it. I mean, millisecond to centiseconds. So, that is a bit faster. Is that not? It is quite so. It is. The word "fast" essentially means rate of distance covered. Fast is relevant to. distance covered for this example i'm only converting the time amounts i'm not converting i haven't mentioned about how much distance was being covered even if i do use a distance this would mean let's say if the object covers let's say 1 uh, meter distance in this part this would be 1 meter divided by this many second or 1 meter divided by this many centisecond or 1 meter divided by this many milliseconds because you have going to have different values of seconds you're going to have different ma measurement of uh, of speed but all of this speed would mean the same value ultimately for being all of them in the same unit for different unit expression you can have different number that's the point that i'm trying to make but they are not going to have different numerical different amount like the example that 36 apple 36 apple no matter how, whether you call it 18 pair or whether you call it 3 dozen you can call it in any way but the 36 apple remains 36 apple Yes, sir. Sure. All right. So if I go ahead and write the uh, symbols over here on this side, uh, once again uh, the for the uh, technique follows the similar manner. So I'm gonna use let's say different color. Let's I'm gonna use blue gray. That's a good color apparently. So from here we're gonna have three more digits. So I'm gonna use certain colors. So from here it jumps to here. So after so if I write the ten power over here, deca was ten to the power one. hecto is 10 to the power 2 and kilo is 10 to the power 3 whereas if you go for directly over here this one means mega mega is what 10 to the power 6 because we have a direct jump from kilo to mega by three steps then beyond the mega we have giga or sometimes it can be also called giga so we have one two three positions over here this is called giga So since it's a confusing thing, I wanted to do. Why don't I look up, look up for the pronunciation?
Giga. Giga. Okay, so yeah, Giga. But some people can also refer to this as Giga. It can differ from person to person. Uh, so it's Giga anyway. So we can call it Giga. So upper limit to mother, a port junto jan le hobe, all of us a Giga ponto. A port aruda value. So first of all, you should know that. Yeah. Because for many, most of us are used to computer devices these days. So Giga power value to hot che tera. Tera. Hard disk that we use, they come in now terabytes. So this is a common term that we do know before our regular uh, experiences. So I can also write over here 0 0.00. This is going to be tera. And bit and after tera, so t if I just write this information just for because I'm covering this part. So tera would be 10 to the power 12. And beyond Terra, we have Peta. Peta. Terra, we have Exa. Exa. After Exa, we have Yota. So you don't need all these parts. Uh, up to this much is good enough for you for the big, bigger side. And up to the Pico, you are good enough. So this is the basic range that you have to remember, which I'm going to give you a right, written note about it. And you have a table, or you can also look it up in your uh, textbook as well. You have that list in your textbook as well. So you have to remember. We don't have in between? Yes. We don't have any names in between, but if. No. Uh, we don't have any names in between. What I mean but, is that, uh, yeah, bolo, bolo, ask the question. But do the mask like, uh, if a number comes somewhere in the between? Yeah, we can write it very easily. For example, give me a number. For example, uh, mili or micro mask, then what will we call it? It will be in the decimal place. So let's say mili or micro mask. What did you have a name? Boltesi, boltesi, don't worry. So let's say I'm gonna write a number up to this decimal place, okay? Let's say so there'll be one, two, three, four, five decimal places. So if I write a number, let's say zero point uh, two, three, four, five, six, five up to five decimal places. If we write this number, how are we, are we gonna read this? Pretty simple. If this had to be a milli, then there had to be another digit. So logically, I can write another zero over here. That doesn't bother me. <laughs> I can. Writing a zero over here is not wrong, is it? No, sir. No, no, it's not. It's not wrong. So essentially, you can say, since this is the six decimal place, so I can write this. This 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 thing means two, three, four, five, six, zero milli. What about that is milli milligram? So we we'll add the extra zeros. Yes, we can extract zero. Or that's one way. That's one way. Or the other way I can write this. I'm going to write this number once again. Zero point. Let's say two, three, four, five, six. Anyway, it's the participant list. So if I want to go for up to, up to, up to, uh, uh, so that was for the, sorry, I, I wrote wrong. This is supposed to be for micro. I, I wrote it wrong. Mili hole to three division. Six division bond dash to micro hoi jabe. Micro symbol hoche erokom. It looks like mu. This is the Greek or Italic letter. This is the symbol for mu. It's basically a U with a long leg on the left side. Long vertical leg. There is no curve over here. Let me just show you the symbol for mu, just since we are covering this up. So why don't I show you? How does mu look like? This is how the mu looks like. It's basically you, the long leg on the left. Okay. So there's a symbol for micro. So this is this many micro. Or if you want to go for milli, milli is covered up to the third decimal place, which means a two point to milli. Up to this much is milli. So I can write this thing, if I want to write this in milli, I can pretty well write 234.56 milli. That is also perfectly equal. Check this out. Sir, I didn't understand. Uh, we moved the decimal place three division to the right. So we had to make the value to be expressed as a 10 to the power minus three embedded over here. I still did not understand. Why would we do that? If we want to express it in, in, in milli, let's say you are trying to add this many grams with 23.4 gram, 20, sorry, 23.4 milligrams. So let's say you have to add these two masses for any purpose. Right. So you cannot essentially add these two numbers as long as these two things are dissimilar. You have to convert them into the same quantity. So let's say for your, for your experiment, you decided that I want everything to be in milligram. So you would require this number to be expressed in milligram. So if you convert this number into milligram, this is going to be this many milligrams. Uh, right. Now yes. I understood. Beautiful. Sir, I have another question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, 
uh, in the example you showed us, why did we multiply <laughs> 18 with 1 by 6? We did not multiply 18 with 1 by 6. We actually multiplied 18 with we actually multiply, okay, because I'm going to use this entire expression as a single thing that is dozen. I don't want to hamper this because six pay equals to one dozen. So I don't want, why don't want to mess up this six because six pair is one dozen. If I want to write the word dozen, I need to have six pair. Right. I can replace this entire phrase six pair as a single word dozen. So I kept this much intact and, and did the numerical calculation with the rest of the numbers that we have. To give why is one by six? Because I cannot simply multiply because 36 apple cannot be written as 36 into 6 apple. 36 into, uh, I cannot write 36 apple as 36 into 6, 6 pair. That would be wrong. Right. Oh, so right. We, did, we did this much for mathematical reason. We kept this much intact for unit reason. And with this much calculation, because we could. Right. Okay, so I understood now. Sure. Uh, do we have any raised hands? No. Um, sir? Yes. If you have said decimal places, we can add the zeros. But decimal places are somewhere in the middle. High. For example, kilo or mega are in the middle. What do we do? Oh, what do we do? For example, you give me a number. Give me any number that you think that I want to use. Uh, for example, uh, mega or uh, kilo or mass. There is a gap, right? Utter middle is the Then what? Thoro a po a a number upon that number like what? Okay, sir. Uh, yes, sir. So let's say, so what what place is this? If I go from here, this is unit ten. Ah uh, no 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 yeah unit ten, no. Uh, what did what did I mess up? Unit ten, hundred thousand, then two division before thousand. So, so let's say I'm gonna write a number like this. Let's say. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. No, I should give another digit. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. Six so is the number that we want to express in some sort of uh, multiplication. It's pretty simple. If you want to express something in kilo, you have to divide this number by thousand. Um, no, sir, Otana. I'm saying that somewhere between mega, mega or kilo or mask, it doesn't have a name, right? Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That if you want to express this in terms of, so you can only, so, okay, I get your point. You can either choose to express this in terms of kilo or you can choose it to be mega. If you have, let's say this many gram, if you want to express this in terms of kg, this, you can write this as, you can write it as 123.456 kilogram. That is perfectly good. But if you want to express this in terms of mega, then you have to divide this thing by 10 to the power six. Because every mega, that num that expression of mega has 10 to the power 6 embedded within itself. So you can divide this number by 10 to the power 6 in your calculator and see how much you get. Divide, divide it by 10 to the power 6. Achha, let me show, show, tell you everything one more thing. Many of you, uh, whenever you're using calculator, you write this entire cross 10, then you press x to the power y button in your calculator and then, play, then press the button 6. Prefer don't, not to write like this. In your calculator, if you have a look in your calculator, this, this is your calculator, here is the display, here is the small buttons, here is the big buttons. Over here, you're going to see an exp button. Do you see that? Some calculator is going to have ESP button. Some calculator has a symbol like this. Do you see that? Yes, sir. It's a sign. Um, yes, sir. Preferably, Class -wise calculator. Yes, sir. preferably, preferably yes, sir. practice to use this symbol. I mean, if you're trying to write 16 to 10 to 6, you're going to press 6, 6 over here, then press this number. You're going to automatically see in your calculator it is showing you this 16 to 10 to the power. This 10 is going to become as a bit smaller, and then there is going to be a blink over here. Then you can write six over here. This is your 16 to the power six. Do not write the whole thing over here. I mean, one way to write this thing is using this symbol, or you can write like this six, then you can press the cross symbol, then you press one but button one, then you press zero button. So six into 10, then you're gonna press x to the power y button, which is somewhere over here in the small buttons, then you're gonna press six. So that's another way to write this. So you have to press one, two, three, four, five, six buttons. Here you have to, you're gonna only have to press three buttons. So that's the difference, saves time. Yes, sir. I prefer to uh, yes, sir. Uh, achieve that. So we can convert this thing into, me into, into megagrams if you want. We have to divide it by 10 to the power 6. So if you do this division by 10 to the power 6, you can essentially find out how much mega is that. That's one way to do this. 
the easier way to do this is that if you, if you remember that mega has a 10 power of 6 that's that may, that can make the process much too simple have a look this was your decimal point over here well, we don't have any decimal point but since we do not have any further unit we have to understand this is the last point because we don't have any zero over here. so the decimal point is assumably here for mega you have to move to convert anything into mega you have to move that number six division to the left so count one two three four five six so the point should come over here that's another way shortcut way to do this dividing by 10 to the power 6 is the same as moving the decimal point 6 division to the left in the same identical way expressing something from a higher unit to a smaller unit if you remember this number you will have to move the decimal point that many divisions to the right if you wonder if you wonder what i'm saying i'm going to show it to you so uh, let me just complete this part if i want to express this into megagram i can write 0 0.1234565 I did a couple, five, six, megagram. Mega is given by capital M, whereas mil is given by small m. Important to understand and take care for the capitalization. It's very important. So this can be also happen. If, if, if you wonder that, what did I say for the decimal point movement? You can see it over here. Have a look. This was 92.5 second, right? Take this out. This is 92.5 second. If you now think about it, if you want to express into centi, centi has a 10 to the power of how many? How many? Centi 10 to the power of minus two, have a look. This is minus two, which means, oh, yes. which means you have to move that move. You have to move the decimal place to the right side by two divisions. So here and one more. So you need another zero over here. So that's basically nine two five zero. Check this out. In the same way, if you want to convert this into milliseconds, you have to move the decimal point three divisions. So you're gonna have move it one, two, three. So you're gonna have, need two more zeros over here. So this is basically 9200, 500 seconds, because basically what this means that this decimal point was here. In the second expression, the decimal point used to be here, and now the decimal point is here. So it has moved by how many divisions? Have a look, three, three places. That's another shortcut way to do the number conversion. As long as you can understand, remember the number of power, you can move the decimal points logically. If you want to convert it into a smaller unit, move the decimal point to the right. If you want to convert it into a bigger unit, then move that decimal point to the left. Basic. This is also the reason. This is um this is the reason I usually show the kids this number form in this format. Have a look. Here's the decimal point. So you want to go to the bigger side, you have to move the decimal point to the left. You have to go to the smaller number, you have to move the decimal point to the right. So that's very basically very simply uh, simply on a very simple expl explanation because that's how the, that's how this whole symbolization works. Bigger numbers on the left, small numbers on the right. Bujat say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this was for the uh, whole discussion for the uh, number things. Uh, so I'm going to show you one more one more calculation. Then I'm going to get back to the equations of motions. Uh, one of the thing that is important for us to understand, which is going to be a very important part for our uh, mathematical calculation for the uh, motion chapter, is how can we work with kilometer per hour and convert them vice versa into meter per second. What is the easy, easiest way to do this kind of conversion? Or, or let's say another case. You know. Let's say you have an unit which is given as gram per cm cube. This is basically a unit of uh, density, mass by volume, which I'm gonna learn about in appropriate case. If we want to convert this into kg per meter cube, or if you have to convert vice versa, how could we convert this without any mistake? 10 to the power three. Uh, into 10 to the power into three. Into 10 to the power three. Why into 10 to the power 3? That's what I'm going to explain. I mean, why does this 10 to the power 3 come from? That's what I'm about to explain. So I'm going to go very detailed in these processes. So I want you to keep your eyes peeled and try to understand what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to teach you. Let's say you have a number. Uh, let's say I'm going to give you a very simple number. Let's say we have an object going around in 36 kilometers per hour. And if you wonder why 36, I have a logical reason to choose 36. The way I prefer to convert this, is the elaborate way. I'm showing you the elaborate way. You don't ever have to show the elaboration conversion, but if you can do this in a calculator, you are good to go for most of, for all of your mathematical uh, mathematical questions. But the reason I'm showing you an elaborate calculation because I want you to understand how it works in the actual case. I can write 36 kilometer per hour in this fashion. 36 kilometer goes on the top, hour comes at the bottom. Then it can be written further like this, 36. How many, how many meters make one kilometer? 1,000. 1,000. 1,000. 1,000. 3,600 seconds. Now you see everything becomes much too simple. 
zero 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 crosses out. The reason I chose thirty six because I wanted to get rid of this thing. So how much we are left with? Ten. Per second. So thirty six kilometer per hour basically gives you ten meter per second. That is the basic idea. A conversion factor to bujhaye sir. Je kya mene kore dalo kilometer ke bhai meter likhi. Kono jamal nai. Hour ke bhai second likhi. Kono jamal nai. Then you just do the calculation and you are good to go. If you do something in the other way around, let's say if I want to choose a random value of centimeter, meter per second, let's say if I want to calculate, let's say, uh, but let's say 25 meter per second into kilometer per hour. If I want to do that, 25 meter per second equals to how many kilometers per hour? That's our question. We want to do this. So how can we do that? Really simple. Now we have to do a bit reverse calculation. Have a look. 25 meter per second. Need to go a bit down. 25 meter per second. Can be written as 25 meter divided by second, which can be further written as 25 into 1 by 1000 kilometer. Now this is the part that I really want you to understand. And one second can be written as 1 by 3600 hour. It is good to get slow. Expression to the book you're gonna go. Can you understand that meter can be expressed in kilometer in this fashion? And can you understand that second can be expressed in terms of hour in this fashion? Is it understandable? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. It's very important. One by one thousand red, one thousand touch the numerator side. Kilometer taken to aka, which means kilometers on the numerator side. Or I could also write that one kilometer divided by thousand. If that makes better sense to you, be my guest. No problem. Write it that way. Other, if, if if writing on the side makes you a bit confused, you can always write the symbol on the numerator side, which is perfectly alright. But don't make the confusion uh, that where this, this number should go. So it can be also written as one hour by thirty six hundred because if you divide one hour by thirty six hundred, you basically get one second, which makes sense. Now you can very easily do the cross multiplication. So how we're going to do the cross multiplication? This is the part is pretty simple. Twenty five into thirty six hundred divided by thousand. I just flip the ratio. Uh, into kilo, uh, kilometer per hour. So kilometer per hour is going to be our unit. And if you do the whole calculation over here, 25 by 1000 gives you how much? 400, no, 440 and 00. zero. So that gives you 90 kilometers per hour. So pretty nice answer. So 90 kilometers per hour. So that's, that is the elaborate version of this whole math. Now, if you wonder, well, this is the safest way, but there is a shortcut. The shortcut is also I'm going to teach you. Have a look at the shortcut. Try to understand. Let me elaborate for. But before I go for the shortcut, a calculation like you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the shortcut that is is that have a look. Whenever I was converting kilometer hour into meter per second, try to understand kilometer per hour into meter per second. This is the mathematical. Let me just use a different color, red. This is the mathematical ratio that I multiplied by. This is the number. So what is the number? 1000 by 3600. When we are converting from meter per second into, into kilometer per hour, I multiplied by the reverse number. 3600 by 1000. Have a look. You multiply 25 with this number, you get the kilometer per hour. So if I just find out the shorter version or the, or the calculated uh, smaller fraction of this number, 1000 divided by 3600 gives you how much? Give 1 you by 36. No. It gives you 5 by 18. Or if you have difficulty remember 5 by 18, be my guest to remember 10 by 36, not 1 by 36. They are both the same. Do you see they are both the same? Yeah. Yes, sir. They are both the same. So you can remember this one, you can remember this one. But what I want to see, what kind of a fraction is this? Is this a uh, proper fraction or an improper fraction? Improper. Proper fraction. Proper fraction. Proper fraction. Proper fraction. This is a proper fraction because the numerator is small and the denominator is it's a proper Big. fraction. Which essentially means that the final answer over here should be numerically smaller than this number. Because you are multiplying this number with the proper fraction. Proper fraction the a certain number multiply the result original number because you are taking making it multiplying with a smaller number than one. Now easier way to remember that. I mean the way I I used to remember when I was at your level, or the way my, my, I remember this, that kilometer per hour is a large, large uh, unit. That, that is, I mean, large in the sense that I use this term to make sense to me. This is not a physics word. I mean, it, is, it has kilometer, it has hour, so it's a large unit. 
and meter per second is everything is becoming smaller kilometer becoming meter and hour becoming second so if i'm trying to convert kilometer per hour into meter per second i have to multiply with the proper fraction so i used 5 by 18 and the other way around if you are trying to go from meter per second to kilometer per hour have a look if you look at consider the uh, units meter uh, compared to meter to kilometer kilometer is bigger and second to hour hour is bigger so in this case i assume that i'm going to convert to the bigger unit so if i, if I want to number convert the number bigger i have to multiply by the inverse ratio which happened to be 18 by 5 or if you are not comfortable with this you can remember 36 by 10 that also works with me so if you're multiplying by the proper fraction you're going to make the number smaller applicable for kilometer per hour into meter per second or if you want to convert from the if you want to if you want to make it uh, if, if you want to convert from the meter per second to kilometer per hour you're going to use the bigger fraction bigger means what what is bigger simply this fraction is going to become inversed so you're going to get the opposite fraction and your this number will always be numerically larger than this number this is how i used to remember for faster calculation and which paid me i mean it paid me off by a whole lot do i make sense yes sir sir i didn't understand which part um uh i didn't understand why we have to choose uh 5 by 18 instead of uh 10 by 36 you're going to use any on what whichever is easier for you to remember okay but like you said something about um you know what did you say about can you just repeat what you said about um uh can you just repeat what you said said about the denominator thing oh yeah about the denominator thing what i meant is that uh, 10 by 36 can be easier for many some of us to remember because 10 by 36 comes directly from the ratio of 1000 by 3600 so you can right. very in your head you can cross out those two pair of zero uh, one uh, zero zero and zero zero so you can visualize 10 by 36 that's one way that's how some of our brain work better i personally prefer 5 by 18 because that's how my brain is to work but the basic idea is you're gonna i mean the I mean, if you can remember this thing, the 10 and 36, the ratio is going to be made by 10 by 36. The key point of confusion that the kids suffer whenever they are doing maths uh, very rigorously, that am I going to multiply with 10 by 36 or am I going to multiply with 36 by 10? Which am I going to choose for which, app, app, uh, which application? That's why uh, to remember that part, I give, you, I give you a shortcut. That if you're trying to go from kilometer per hour into meter per second, you use 10 by 36, which means you use that. Sir, sir, can you go slower? I have to write this down. Okay, whenever you are going from kilometer per hour into meter per second, you have to use 10 by 36. Why? Because that's what the calculation shows us. All oh, right, 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 of course, yeah. Now I understood. So uh, the way I used to remember is that I'm trying to convert a bigger unit into a smaller unit. So this big and small is something that I made up in my head. This is not, these are not physics relevant terms. Right. And the other way around for the other other opposite conversion. Okay. Then yes, how is sir, it relevant? Sir, I, I, I mean, wait, yeah, yeah, Fabi, hello. Sir, how is this relevant to you know the calculation? We're gonna see them in a bit because in many of the questions you are not gonna be provided with the meter per second speed. Uh, you're gonna be having the initial speed or the final velocity of the object in kilometers per hour. For uh, if it is given in if the question gives you the speed of an object in meter per second, then you don't have to in most cases ever have to convert into kilometers per hour unless the question specifies it which is pretty rare but okay. if the question gives you the value in kilometers per hour then in all cases to do the calculation you have to convert them into meter per second because the final answer is usually always expected in si unit right okay now i understood sir sure. So it's 6.55 now, so we're going to take a five minutes break, uh, five to five to seven minutes break. Start ten, eight, 10 minutes, Steven. Okay, fine. Well, let's take a 10 minutes break. Uh, we'll resume at 7.05. That works? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So, yes, we're, sir. Uh, so we're pausing the class for the time being. So uh, we'll resume in 10 minutes. Okay. No, no, no. Sorry, so, I can have small to big multiply are big uh, big to small divide now <laughs> exactly divide take i actually directly divide bully nine divide take i'm both so say proper fraction they multiply there's a proper fraction they multiply karma which basically value come my father you see 36 became 10 so you have the numerical value became smaller so you have to multiply by a proper fraction 
बुझाया सर जी सर सो ये क्या लाइट जिनिश अच्छा हाँ ना मैं आज के जो जिनिश टाइप एक्टिवली टॉपिक पढ़ना पड़ता है एक्चुअली स्वेड आउट बिकॉज़ दिस और द रिलेवेंट स्टाफ्स दैट आई नीडेड टू टेल यू इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस मोमेंटम पढ़ना कथा चलो ना मोमेंटम ना मोमेंटम तो अंदर ओल्ड वर्सेस सिल्वर्स ना इट्स इन द एस सिल्वर्स यू हैव मोमेंट बट नॉट Momentum and moment are two different things. Anyway, so I'm gonna go for the equations of motion. So I'm gonna first write up this equation, and then then I'm gonna start talking about these stuffs. So let's have a look. The way I prefer to teach the equation is like this. I'm gonna write the equation first. V equals to u plus a t. This is the first equation. Number two, I might as well increase the space volume over here. <clears throat> Sir. Yes. Sir, आपने equations of motion और ऊपर notes दी बन ना like detailed हाँ, notes. हैं दी बो. Sir कॉप है. और notes तो बोला photo को भी करा सके ना तो कोई किसी soft copy तो काम रखा है ना मैं जस्ट scan करे तो आधे के दी दे बार बो. I have everything. Uh, I mean ऐसा कोई shoot वाला के दी दे बार बो. I hope. अल्लाह hard copy को भी बार बो. हार्ड कॉपीओ कुफ रिसेंटली पापा सब कुछ भी क्या के पुरता है को नोट्स पिन करा लग बेना अम्म तो वो तो हार्ड कॉपी हार्ड कॉपी कुफ चिकनी पाठा बाएं पाठा 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 तो तो वहाँ दे पैस शवर वो बेटे जाप करे फिर से अंजस पिन कर दिया सस सस बांध लगा शुरू करता है इसे फन एम फास्ट एम कुटिस दिखाने स्लो ही त तुम्ही सॉफ्ट कॉपी थे के मैं तो मार डिवाइस पीसी बा मोबाइल जिधर यूज़ करते हो शेयर करते हो तुम्ही कोड बा ब्राउज़ करोगे बिकॉज़ इट विल बी गिवन इन पीडीएफ फॉर्म सो इट विल बी इज़ी फॉर यू टू रीड थ्रू like पूरी की कॉपी तो कॉपी करता होगा बे नॉट कॉपी तो और समथिंग कॉपी तो किसी कॉपी करला है ना कॉपी तो जो दिक्कत कॉपी करते हैं वो कॉपी तो कौन मैस करता है शेखला में तो वहाँ तक बोल बो तो मैं फीस जो कॉपी डे मेंटेन करूँगा शेखला में शॉप्स में आई मैं जिकर उस दिन जिकर उस कास्ट करने का ना डेट दे डेट दे कास्ट करूँगा राइट द डेट एंड देन यू गो फॉर फॉर एग्जांपल ये क्वेश्चन को बुझाना पड़ा मैं तो वहाँ दर्शाते किसी मैथ्स क्वाब हो तो वहाँ दर क्लास है सो आई एम गन आपने जो हार्ड कॉपी था दीपन वो इतना कि माने लाइक शॉप से लो पूरा से लो बस ये नोट्स थक पे ना कि चैप्टर वाइज सेगमेंट सेगमेंट थक पे मोस्ट लाइक अच्छा माने लाइक एक एक तो चैप्टर पूरा आपने बार बार दीपन अच्छा अच्छा दिस इस द फोर इक्वेशंस दैट वी हैव दिस फोर इक्वेशंस कैन बी वेरी इजीली डि� Divided by time, so I could actually write a bit more. Uh, delta v divided by time. Delta means change, and change will always mean final minus initial, not big minus small. Difference means big minus small. Change always means final minus initial. So that's the equation. So if you do the cross multiply, forget about this part. So I'm gonna let's say I'm gonna put this into bracket. So if you do the multiple cross multiplication of these two parts, you're gonna get a t equals to b minus u. Basically, if you do the side change, you're gonna end up with this equation b equals to u plus a. That's your first equation. So, which means final velocity of an object is equal to initial velocity. Use the symbol for initial velocity, and acceleration is a t is time. A <coughs> is the distance covered or displacement. To be honest, now one of the key point that I want to to understand. I mean, a couple of. Actually, let me let me elaborate the question. Then I'm going to talk about the logic of this thing. So that's the derivation for the first equation. This means that uh, using this equation, we can very easily calculate any of the four vari any of the four variables that we have in the equation, provided we have the other three variables available to us. So if you know the value of any three, the fourth one can be calculated. Which could be any one. It doesn't have to be v. It doesn't have to be u. We could calculate any of these four variables, provided you have the you have access to the other four variables. The second equation is basically the idea of uniform velocity. Now, one of the key logic that I want to tell you, well, it comes up over here. All of these four equations are applicable for constant acceleration segment. This is highly important, like super important. You cannot use these equations for motion scenarios where accelerations are different. You cannot. What I mean is that if, if in a case, a question tells you that an object moves from point A to point B at an acceleration of let's say uh, 0.5 meter per second square. And then it moves from point B to point C 
uh, not in, not essentially the two two lengths has to be equal. Let's say it moves from point B to C at let's say two meter per second square. Okay, you cannot use the, any of this formula for the entire segment AC in a single go. You have to do the relevant calculations for this part at one stage, and then you have to calculate the motion parameters for this part differently. The only thing that you can use as a common variable for this kind of a motion is that at this B point, the velocity will have a single value. So what I can tell, the final velocity of the segment AB at point B is the initial velocity of segment BC. <coughs> so VB can be a common variable for both the segments. Anything else can be different because the object is going to continuously move from, the, from A to B. So the final velocity of segment SB can be the initial velocity of segment BC. That's the common variable you can use, but you cannot use the same set of formula for the entire segment AC in a single go. You cannot do that. Constant acceleration of the formula will be applicable, however. So that's one thing. So this also brings us to the idea that these formula are only going to be applicable for linear cases, not going to be applicable for circular motion. What do I mean by this? Whenever any object moves in a circular motion, for each individual position of the object, the velocity works tangent to the circle and the acceleration work towards the center. If the object is over here, this is going to be a scenario. There's going to be 90 degree between them. If the object is over here, the velocity is going to change tangent to the circle like this and the acceleration is going to change over here. So as the object keeps on rotating in the circle, continuously acceleration and direction change. However. The acceleration is, it might have the same value, but it's not going to maintain the same direction because acceleration is also a vector quantity. The change of an acceleration can happen from the magnitude change or from the velocity or from the direction change. Since the direction of acceleration for an, a circular moving object is ever changing, continuously the direction is changing. So we have to say as a quantity, that, as a vector quantity, the acceleration that is also changing. This change is not happening from the, not, uh, is not essentially happening from the change of value. It is essentially, but it is definitely happening from the change of direction. So if we cannot use this formula for a circular motion object, that's not going to be working out for our purpose as well. So that's another thing. Uh, <clears throat> for most part of our syllabus, we're going to have to work with linear or linear motion scenario. What does that mean? I'm going to cover that in a bit. Now, the way this formula comes into existence is actually a bit, uh, uh, a bit detailed. So one of the, one of the, one of the, one of the, one of the ways we actually define average velocity. So average velocity is this average velocity for a uniform acceleration object can be given by so average velocity for a uniform object or a moving object uh, is given by v plus u divided by two now if you wonder why 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 this should be like this i mean wh why why the sum of these numbers should represent this let me assure this in this part in one of our earlier classes we did discuss <laughs> that whenever any object uh, we did discuss about the uh, area value of multiple graphs and then we also discuss the gradient value of multiple graphs. Now, let me show you, let's say the VT graph of an object that is undergoing uniform acceleration. Let's, this is the velocity versus time graph. So let's say this is the initial velocity U and this is the T equals to zero. So the object starts from T equals to zero and this is the initial velocity. Let's say the object undergoes an uniform acceleration. So it, the velocity increases linearly and let's say this is where the object uh, is has this final velocity. So let's say this is the amount of time that we want to work. So we will essentially have a trapezium over here. So this is the final velocity of the value. So this is the V, final velocity. If you wonder, well, this is V, this is V. Do both of these things mean the same thing? There is a catch. Catch means we are plotting V versus T, which means we are trying to plot the individual final velocity of each time instances. So the velocity of the object at T equals to zero is defined to be initial velocity. So when t goes to zero, the velocity of the object v goes to u. When t goes to anything bigger than zero, then we call it final velocity. So we are actually plotting the final velocities with every single point and if we join up to all these points, we get this straight line. Now have a, have a look. How much distance should be covered by this object as this, as this velocity increases from this point to this point? How much would be the distance covered? Logically, it should be the area of this uh, area of this trapezium. Do you know this thing? Yes. It is supposed yes, to be the area of, this tra area of this trapezium. So, one of the ways to define average velocity, average velocity. I mean, the basic definition of average velocity can be given by this total displacement. You have by total, by total outcome. Time. No, total time. 
time. But if you are trying to calculate average speed, that's a bit different. Tell me the difference. Distance. Total distance traveled. Exactly. Total. That should be total distance by total time. There is a bit difference into this expression, which I'm gonna cover in due time. But try to remember that these two things are not exactly the same. It is not essentially the same. They can have a bit different expression for applicable cases, which I'm gonna cover in, in a bit. So <clears throat> the total distance covered of this object should be equal to the area of the trapezium. Now have a look. The idea of average velocity essentially means that if the object, in this case, the object actually underwent change of velocity. That's what is shown in the increase, in, 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 increase uh, behavior of this graph. If the object, <coughs> if the object, the idea of average velocity is that if the object did not undergo this change of velocity, ra but rather maintained a single value of velocity over the same duration of time, and if it covered the exact same distance, that velocity is what you call the average velocity. So, <coughs> if so we- can repeat. If the object maintained an uniform velocity throughout the motion, so if I if I give you a new, if you, if I give you a visual expression, let's say let's consider this part. So, so let's say uh, an object was here, that it moved from here to here with some velocity. Then it let's say then it remained stationary over here for some time, and then it went over here at another velocity, and then it went up over here. So let's say it had three different segments. Maybe a car making its journey from. Uh, superstore to the house so it had two stops in between for two red lights or maybe the person saw someone and went down and get, greet them the idea of average velocity is that if we divide the total displacement by the total time that's what we mean I, average velocity which means if this person started with the with a certain with a value and maintained that same uniform speed not speeding up not slowing down for the entire duration they would be able to reach that exact same ending point after that time. That's the whole idea of average velocity, which means if you consider that the, a person or the, that the object maintained one single velocity and a, along its entire journey without variation, that is can that can be defined to be the average velocity of the object. So the key factor that we are trying to match for two different two for these two different uh, set of uh, uh, example is the distance covered or displacement. <laughs> Since we are using velocity, it should be displacement. So one of the scenarios that the object is moving at different velocities, it is stopping, then it is accelerating, decelerating, and ultimately after, let's say, uh, 10 minutes of time, the person reaches the home. So you can have a, a whole lot of different variation of velocity and acceleration and so on and so forth. At some points, the velocity can be zero if the, if the car is stopping at a red light or something like that. Whereas the idea of average velocity is that if the car did not stop at any point, rather maintain an uniform velocity throughout this motion of 10 minutes, the person would still be able to reach their house. That's the whole idea. That's the theoretical conceptual idea for average velocity. It means if you maintain that value, you'd be achieving that same exact displacement. Do I make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. So, yes, math sir. so mathematically, I'm sir, I didn't understand. Oh, well, I, I'll, 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 answer, I'll explain it in a bit. Again. Just a second. One of the things that I just wrote over here, what did I wrote this thing? That uh, average velocity, average velocity is given by V plus U divided by two. I mean, what does this essentially mean? Now, let's assume that this information is correct. I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove that this information is correct. So let's say in this graph, the average velocity is located right over here. Let's say that this is the average velocity value. So let's say it's still at the middle of V plus U. Let's say this is the average velocity. So I'm going to label this over here. Let's say this is average velocity. Okay. This would mean if the if this car maintain that the same exact speed over the same duration of time, this person would be able to cover the exact same distance. Tikna. So yes. after this time the cover distance for the return uh, repair trapezium and the cover distance for the for for under this green line they should be equal which which means that the area of this rectangle should be exactly equal to the area of this trapezium can we agree on that sir how that's the whole idea of average velocity that within the so same is it possible yeah it's possible within the same amount of time the, the object should cover the same displacement I mean, consider this scenario. Let's say you but are the gonna velocity make a walk. Is different, right? Exactly. They, um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to convince you about. Try to, try to understand, try to visualize. Let's say you want to make a walk from the uh, gate of your building to your school. 
Now there are two different ways you can do this. You can casually walk and you can uh, take a stop to buy some uh, tiffin food and then you can move around and you can run around for some time and then you can go buy. So you can have this much. Or maybe if, if there is no possible case scenario to hamper your motion and you, de you determine that I'm going to maintain one single value of velocity, you can walk at an exact pace and reach to your school, or school door at the, uh, after the same, same time. It's possible for you to achieve. Now, what is important that average velocity will be definitely higher than your lowest speed and it will be definitely smaller than your highest speed. It will be somewhere in between. It cannot be exactly at the middle. But then again, the reason I'm showing you that these two areas are equal because that's how I define the average velocity. Why these two areas are going to be equal? Have a look. You, do you see a triangle over here? Yes. 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 yes triangle. So the, yes. Green, the green rectangle has this much triangle extra where the red trapezium has this much triangle extra. Logic would imply that, the, that these two triangles have the same area. If you wonder why, have a look. These two angles are what? Opposite angles? Yes, yes. vertically opposite. Exactly half. Vertically opposite. Exactly. So this line is exactly half, which means this line and this line are exactly equal, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. This line and this line are also equal, right? Yes, sir. And they are both right angle triangles, right? Yes. yes. So you have yes. equal to each other and you have one arm equal to each other. So they are congruent triangles. So they have the same area. So what, what I'm trying to prove to you is that the green rectangle have this much area extra where the red trapezium had this much area missing, but it covers up by the exact equal amount over here. So logic would imply that the area of both of these geometric shape, rectangle, green rectangle or the red trapezium, they are essentially equal. What does it mean by, by misstating it is that the object will be covering the same distance over the same point. That's the basic idea of average velocity. And this is why if an object undergoes in a straight line a, a, with uniform acceleration, then you can apply this information so only for uniform acceleration, only for, I'm going to write this up over here, let's say, only for uniform acceleration. Only for Sir, acceleration. you say something about the curved one. Yeah, I'm going to go into the curve in a bit. <laughs> Only for the uniform acceleration, we can say that the average velocity equals to u plus v divided by two because these two area of triangle, the area of triangles are going to be exactly equal. This is possible only for uniform acceleration. Now, what I'm going to what is going to happen for non-uniform acceleration? I'm going to talk about that, but let me just take some questions from the kids. And if you have any any question up to this much discussion or this much discussion, you can ask questions. So, yeah, I'll take questions. Uh, Samira. Sir, will the green line be equal to the slanted red one? What do you mean by line being equal? Dimensions of the line, the, the, the length of the line, will they be equal? Uh, obviously not, because uh, this is a slanted line. And this is a straight line, horizontal line. So obviously this is the hypotenuse of the two triangles. This is the base or the opposite side. So obviously the, I mean, the red line is longer than the green line. I, I should say that. Bucho. Yes, sir. Yeah, Sumaya. Sir, can this scenario work in real life? Yes. The answer is yes. Uh, it would be difficult for us to achieve that, but we can design experiments where we can achieve this. For real life, it's not common, but it's not impossible to achieve. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, Adiba. Um, sir, we circle the paper. Are you both parven? Which circle? Uh, you drew a circle. Oh, for circular motion. Yes, sir. Could you not This one. This one? Yes, sir. Whenever any object undergoes in circular motion, its velocity is always tangent to the circumference of the circle and uh, its acceleration always, always works towards the center of the circle. Which means that every single position, you will have, you're going to have different radius. Which and different acceleration. The acceleration will be different by virtue of the direction change. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, okay. So if we, uh, so this is the case for the linear case. Now, what, if, what is going to happen? I mean, can, can we apply this exact expression that average velocity should be equals to average velocity should be equals to uh, average velocity is equals to u plus v divided by two. Can we use the same expression 
for uh, non-uniform acceleration. Can we do that? So let's, let me show you this thing. Non-uniform acceleration means the gradient of the UV graph should not be a constant. So let me try and draw a scenario like this. Let's say I'm gonna use blue for this graph, dark blue. So let's have a look. Let's say this is another graph that we are trying to draw where this is the velocity versus time graph. I'm not drawing giving units over here because these are just sketch graphs, but whenever you're plotting any graph, it's essential, it's imperative that you should always give units. So this might as well be meter per second, this might be second, or you can get, might give kilometer per hour versus hour or time. I mean, any appropriate unit for velocity, appropriate unit for time should be given in your axis whenever you're actually plotting something. So let's say an object is undergoing non-uniform acceleration. So let's say this was the initial velocity, which is okay. And then we are gonna work with non-uniform acceleration, which means let's say we are gonna have an object that accelerates like that. So you can see over here, the gradient is increasing. You see that? It's not a straight line. So since gradient is increasing, means initially you are gonna have a smaller acceleration. As the time goes further, the object is accelerating further. So the value of acceleration is slowly increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing. So let's say we have this situation happening. So what is gonna be the implication? Let's say after t time, the object is over here. So if I just draw a dotted line up to the uh, uh, x-axis, on the time axis, this is gonna be my area and this is gonna be total decision made by the object, which totally makes sense. Now, let's say, uh, so so if I just plot this up over here, right over here, I don't want to draw a dotted line over here because I don't want to confuse you, this is the final velocity. Now, my question is, for this case, can we write average velocity equals to u plus v divided by two? Can we do this? Can we do No. No, no sir. we cannot do this. I mean, why can we not do this? I'm going to show, uh, there are a lot of different ways to, repair, to prove that. I'm going to show you my personal favorite version, the geometry way. Let's assume it is possible. And I'm going to prove it to you that it's not going to be working. So let's say the average velocity is located here. Exactly at the middle. Now the whole idea of average velocity is that if the object maintains that average velocity, it should be able to cover the same amount of distance, right? So if I draw a perfect straight line up to here, Logic tells us the area under this blue line, let's say I'm gonna shade it by uh, deep blue. So let's say, I'm gonna do the shading. <clears throat> so logic tells us that the area of this blue region should be exactly equal to the area under this brown region. But if you just look at the shape of these two spaces, this is one, space i mean i'm not going to define it as a definitive shape this is another part would you agree that the area of these two parts are equal no 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 which one is, which one is bigger no. uh, left the, or right the brown the, one the left the brown one. one exactly the brown one the brown segment is definitely bigger than the blue segment, which means the logic that we applied for this graph over here, the logic that we applied over here, uh, okay, can I use this thing for scrolling? I cannot use it for scrolling, okay. So the logic that we applied over here for congruent triangles is not gonna be equally applicable over here because this is a curve, it's not gonna be perfectly over here. So this should tell you that if I really want to have, I mean, <laughs> we cannot, uh, using our, regularly known uh, formula, we can essentially find out the exact area of these two things. But since this is a bit bigger, so I can assume, I mean, I'm just saying this for the completion of the idea and then we call it a day. Just hold on a sec, hold on a couple of minutes. <clears throat> if I now bring down this uh, brown line a little bit, then I'm gonna be slowly increasing this size and slowly decreasing this size. Do you agree? If I bring down this- Yes, sir. So yes. Let's say if, yes. if I draw this yes. up over here, then the brown segment is going to be slightly smaller and the blue segment is going to be slightly slower. Which means somewhere below to this point, we can essentially get a point where these two areas are going to be equal. How are you going to calculate in the area? That's a different question. But it will be definitely below this mid level. That is definitely true, right? Uh, so we can uh, find the average velocity by this segment? Yes, yes. Uh, if, I mean, the, the, the horizontal line for which both of these segments will have equal area, that is your average velocity. But that cannot be, that cannot be this expression. Can we convince ourselves of that? Okay, yes, sir. So this is exactly where this second equation comes in. The second equation gives you S equals to E plus V divided by 2 into T, which is basically total displacement equals to average velocity into time. When applicable, only for constant acceleration case. Bujhega, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 